we have our roots in what was called the settlement school movement. It came about in the early 1900s when there was the first influx of immigrants, mostly from Eastern Europe. And the settlement movement started in Philadelphia where they used teaching English and teaching music as a way of helping new immigrants assimilate to American culture. And our founder, Pearl Irene O'Dell, uh, worked at the Philadelphia Settlement School in the early 1900s before she moved out here in 1914. And actually Mozart Street is just one of the places the school was in its early days <laughs> until it came here permanently. Uh, one of the places she operated in was in this house in the 1930s. Then she moved to 1412 Boyle Avenue. It's now like a multi-family uh, dwelling. And when she moved there in the 1940s, like 1945, she wanted to add music. In addition to music, she wanted to add theater and dance and visual arts to the course offerings at the school. Well, this was a departure with what the board at that time wanted. The board at that time wanted to just only teach music. At the time, they had musicians from the LA Philharmonic that taught lessons here, and they wanted to just stay with music, keep that the specialty. Well, in 1945, they had a party in the ways. Pearl Irene O'Dell resigned from the board, and so the board had to find a new location. And the president of the board at the time, Dr. Donald Wright, purchased this house for $15,500, can you imagine, in 1946, and they moved in in 1947. You're just not another student in a music school. Yes, we have those good teachers, like the other music school, but you're also not just our student, you're part of a family. And so, when you walk in here, you could expect that we learn your name, we talk to you about your day, we, uh, um, we just, you're, you're part of the family now. We've been established since 1914. We're a big family, but we make sure that, that, that we keep it that way. Yes, we're getting bigger. We just added you know, almost 100 new students in the past three months. But even then, we make a conscious effort to make sure that you're not just another number in this place. But we know your name. We, we know what's going on with your life. We work with you with your financial situation. We do all that stuff. Um, and that's what I really like to think that we do differently. The teacher and you have a nice, strong relationship. You guys will continue for a long time. If you need help with homework, if you need help with practicing, if you need practice space, all that stuff, uh, use us as a resource, not just in music school, but use us as a resource. I think what makes it different is partly the house. It has a homey feel. It doesn't feel like an institution. So when people walk through the door, they feel like they're coming home, not, you know, walking into a, a commercial school, you know. And the staff, all of us feel, we want people to feel welcome here. We want them to have personal attention, like they matter. The students gather at the end of every half hour lesson in the parlor, and they play for each other once a month. So when they get to their formal recitals in June and December, they're comfortable already playing for each other because they've been doing it all along. It's part of their, um, the way we teach. It gives them a foundation for a lifetime of enjoyment of music. Everyone should have some kind of music in their life so that they can appreciate it when they hear it. All, all people have music inside them that can, be, that can be developed to express themselves. And I think most people are not going to go on to be concert musicians or music teachers or they may not have that as you know their life's work but that music enriches you know, people's lives. I like to think that the more important thing is the experience you have here. I don't care if you pay two dollars a lesson. If you don't learn anything here and if you don't have fun, then it's still a waste of two dollars. Even if it's free. Let's say we gave you the lessons, 
you didn't have a good time here, you didn't learn anything, you just wasted time. If it wasn't for an institution that was a non-profit music school that provided quality and affordable music education for a dollar lesson, this world would have wasted talent just because of money. We're, we're a music school, but it's, it's a lot more than that. You're not just gonna learn, you're gonna, be, you're gonna learn how to be your best, to be the best musician from your teachers, but hopefully the best person from this whole experience. I've been here since I was four. I originally wanted to play violin because I kind of have like a big ego. So <laughs> the violinist, every time when I saw the violinist, it was like, that's the guy and that's like the number one guy. Um, so that's why I originally wanted to do it. I was forced to play piano. I hated it. Um, it was just, I was forced to play. The, the lady that was there, her name was Mrs. Doyle, and she said, don't worry, you won't regret it. Like there's a reason why you're playing piano. Um, she said, since you're so young, I'm going to treat you like my son and just that's, this is the best way to do it. Because they said, if you play piano, then when you get good enough, you can play violin. Even though I couldn't quit piano until I learned the Snoopy song, uh, Linus and Lucy, uh, they, they didn't let me quit. I've done everything from, from being a student, from being a volunteer, being a teacher, uh, running music programs to now running the office. The point of music is that you're trying to control someone's emotions, whether it's the listeners or your own. You could improvise. Um, so once you play the, the part that everyone knows, and then you're gonna let your emotions take over and, ma and make something up. As long as you know about, enough about music, you can do it.